In this video, we look at writing parabolas in the form y equals a x plus p all squared plus q, which is known as our turning point form. Now, to be able to take an equation with written in standard form and write it in turning point form, we use the method of completing the square as on an expression. And I, I say as on an expression as opposed on to as on an equation because we have to keep the left hand side y equals. We start with y equals, we want to end up with y equals. So we're not going to touch the left hand side. So everything we do will only occur on the right hand side when we complete the square. So that means instead of adding on both sides, we will be adding and subtracting on one side. Okay. So if we look at this example, it says write the function y equals 4x squared minus 4x minus 3 in the form y equals a x plus p or squared plus q. And hence, remember hence means to use the previous answer or previous question, give the coordinates of the turning point. Okay, so let's start by writing our parabola's equation in turning point form. So to do that, we are going to complete the square as on an expression. So I write out my equation. It's y equals 4x squared minus 4x minus 3. Now our first step is to factorize out the coefficient of x squared. So factorize out the coefficient of x squared which is 4. So I keep my left hand side as is, I'm not touching it, then I'm going to factorize out the 4. Okay, so factorizing out a number is the same as dividing by that number, if you like, um, and writing what you're left with in a bracket. So 4x squared without the 4 is x squared, negative 4x taking out the 4 is negative x, negative 3 divided by 4 is negative 3, over 4 and I close my bracket. Right. Our second step is now to complete the square, perfect square trinomial. So my first two terms here are the first two terms of that perfect square trinomial. So what I need to do is add the third term. But if I'm adding in a third term, I'm changing the value. So I need to also subtract the third term. So we're going to add and subtract. The third term of the perfect square trinomial. And I hope that you remember how to find this third term. We take our b value, which is the coefficient of x. We halve it, so that means we divide it by 2. And then we square it. So we're going to be adding and subtracting this value. So we have y equals 4. Then I have my square bracket, x squared minus x. Now my third term, let me just change the color slightly, okay, is plus, I'm adding it, okay. Now my b value is negative 1. So it's negative 1. I'm halving it, dividing it by 2, and then squaring it, okay. So, then I have my negative 3 over 4 from the previous line. But since I've added in a value, I need to also subtract that value. Okay, so I'm going to be subtracting the third term. Now, the third term simplified is negative 1 over 2 squared means I square the negative 1, which gives me positive 1. I square the 2, which is 4. Okay, and then close your square brackets. Right, our next step is to factorize the perfect square trinomial and to simplify the rest that we are left with. So I've got y equals 4. Okay, I'm going to factorize into a curly bracket. And the way we, and it, sorry, it factorizes as that bracket squared. The way we factorize is we square root the first term. So the square root of x squared is x. I square root the last term. This is where it's very helpful to leave your third term 
as you have calculated it. Because if I square root this bracket squared, I'm left with exactly what's inside the bracket. Negative a half. Right. Then I simplify what I'm left with up beyond the perfect square trinomial, which is negative 3 quarters minus a quarter, which is negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. Close your square bracket. So um, our third step was to factorize the perfect square trinomial. And simplify the rest. Simplify the rest, if you like. Okay, right. Our final step is to get rid of these square brackets because they are not part of our turning point form of, an, of a parabola. So I have y equals, now I'm going to distribute this 4 to both terms within the square bracket. So it's 4 times the curly bracket and then 4 times the second term, which is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. Now my equation is in the turning point form. So I've answered the first part of the question, but then it says, and hence, give the coordinates of the turning point. So my turning point coordinates, I can easily read from the turning point form of a parabola. My y coordinate is exactly the q value, which is negative 4. My x coordinate I find by taking what I have in brackets, that's the x minus a half, make it equal to zero and then solve for x. That gives me x equals a half. So my x coordinate of the turning point is a half and that is my turning point.